I have these old night lights that have an actual LED in them. And I thought it would be cool to replace the LED with a color change LED. And if you're not familiar with the color change LEDs, I've got one right here and they have a little tiny chip in them and they have an RGB LEDs. There's three of them in there. And when you power it, you'll see it cycles through the colors, red, green, and then eventually blue. Now they make a couple of different styles. This one's a slow flash or a slow cycle. So it takes a little bit of time to go through. They also make a fast change one, which cycles very, very quickly. They also make some flicker ones, which you might see inside of a little uh, candle, a little tea light candle that's flameless. Um, but these all work perfectly fine to be able to replace inside one of these. Now, let's just go ahead and go through the process of what it's gonna take. The first step is to get these apart. Now, these ones I have are probably close to 10 years or more old. So if you get a new one, they may be a lot different. Now, this one in particular, I do know has the top part here is glued or fused together. It looks like it's clipped, but it's really not. Now, the trick to getting these apart, for mine anyway, is to put this in a vise and then just slowly increase the pressure and then flip it around and do the same thing. And eventually that will pop and then it'll pop the seal open on it and then we'll be able to get it apart. Now it will snap back together pretty hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this apart and then I'll show you what's next. All right, so I've popped this on the vise and now I can get it apart. And it comes apart, you'll see in two different pieces. Uh, this one did a nice clean cut. I did another one that it was a little bit more broken up, but uh, this one came apart nicely. Now mine in particular has two different side pieces and then it's got this little diffuser on the top and then a reflector on the top and then this diffuser or little um, kind of tube for the light to go through here in the middle. So we're gonna take all those pieces apart and now there's a single screw in the back which holds these two pieces together. So let's go ahead and take that apart. So now that I've got it apart, you can see there is a regular looking LED on the top. Now the first thing I'm gonna do, even though this one's been unplugged for a while, is I'm just gonna make sure that these capacitors are shorted out. Now you can't actually see which one is which within here because we're, we're only able to see the back side, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's a liter resistor on there and it's probably not a big deal, but better safe than sorry on those. They can be up to your supply voltage, which in this case would be 110 volts. Now you can see the resist photo resistor on the top here, which goes through its little lens right here on the front. And then you can see the LED on the very top. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a coin cell battery and we're gonna figure out what the orientation is for this LED so we can mark the positive and the negative. So this is the easiest way to tell the positive from the negative. I've just got a coin cell battery and if I wedge it in there between the two posts, you can see this lights up, which means the positive is on the right. And if I flip it around, you'll see it does not light. So this is an easy way to tell which, which side is the positive and which is the negative. So now I would just mark on the right-hand side with a Sharpie, a uh, little plus sign here or up here, indicating that's the positive. That's gonna be important later when we go ahead and replace this LED. That way we'll know which side is the uh, positive. So the next step is going to be to desolder this LED, clean up the pads, and then put a new LED in and along with a resistor. So one trick on getting the old LED out is you're gonna to wanna to reflow in some fresh solder. So just take some solder, heat this up, add some additional solder to that. Now these old solder joints are gonna be really hard to come apart if you don't do that. So you flow in a little bit of solder, it may be counterintuitive, but a little fresh solder will make a huge difference. And then you should be able to heat that up and this should fall right out. You should be able to pull it right out. Uh, depending on your version, they may or may not be through the holes or they may just be laid on the top. If you still have trouble, just go ahead and cut the leads themselves right here as close as you can and then use a solder sucker and you should be able to get the last little remnants apart. So let's go ahead and see what the final version looks like. All right, so here's the final version. Now, once I got it taken apart and desoldered, I went ahead and plugged it into an outlet very carefully as to not touch the live posts here. And I put a little piece of heat shrink tubing over the top of my photoresistor so that it would simulate complete darkness. And then using my multimeter, I measured the two pads in order to see what the voltage was. Now, the voltage on this one happened to be about 10 volts. I don't know exactly why it was 10 volts. It may be that the capacitors are going bad in here, or it may just be that that was a LED that supported a much higher voltage. 
Either way, the LED that I'm putting in here uh, was only going to support about 3 to 3.2 volts, but I also wanted to limit the current significantly so that it wasn't too bright. So I actually put a 2000 ohm resistor in series with the LED, and you can see that right here. Now, you may want to do a lighter, lower resistance value. You could do a 480 or maybe even a 200 ohm resistor. The lower the resistor, the shorter the lifespan of the LED is, and the brighter it's going to be. So anyway, here's the final version. I have the LED plugged in and I've got my photoresistor here still sticking up. I was careful not to damage that as part of it. And now we can just go ahead and assemble the whole product and see what it looks like. Now to assemble this, the easiest way to do this is to make sure you line up that photoresistor into the window here before you put the screw back on. Now these screws can be a little bit of a nuisance on this particular model. Of course, yours may come apart a little bit different, um, but in this particular case, that screw did not come all the way out. So now that I've got the screw in, we can just go ahead and tighten that back up. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the little light diffuser on, as well as this little light tube. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this reflector on the top and then just sandwich them all back together. Now, even though it was originally glued together, it does friction fit pretty well with those little clips on it and then the bottom part as well. So I'm not gonna re-glue this. You can re-glue it if yours cracked a little bit different or if you wanna make sure that it's not gonna come apart again. Uh, but anyway, there we go. That's the entire project. It did not take too long to do. The hardest part is just getting the old solder out and to do that, you may need to flow in a little bit of fresh solder. Um, but anyway, let's uh, take a look at the final version in the dark. So there you have it. The whole project only took maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, pretty straightforward project, not a lot to it, but it's a lot of fun and you can have some color changing LEDs. Of course, this will work with different LEDs. Just make sure that you pair that resistor accordingly. Uh, I've done blues and, and reds and purples. You can get all kinds of different LEDs. Just uh, make sure that they're, they're functioning well with the uh, current that you've got. That's all. Uh, if you liked it, go ahead and give it a good thumbs up and we'll see you next time.